Hi, this is Brian Haberlin from DigitalArtTutorials.com, and I'm going to do a whole uh, line of little short tutorials by showing you programs you should consider having in your quiver. Now, I think an artist, especially a digital artist, should be armed with all the plethora of things that are out there, uh, and they're not to be used, you know, straight up or everything. Like that it's like you know, take bits and pieces from them. Uh, this is in the filter category. This is filter forge. This is a maximum huge tons of things it can do. Uh, something you could explore for ages and ages and ages. Uh, they have a website where you can download for free just tons of filters that you can play with and see what's going on and again you know I usually recommend don't take things right out of the, the the can you know take them and use them and apply them to your work change the change them make them your own okay uh, but there's I mean just tons and tons and tons of, I mean you can see there's thousands of filters here that you can use uh, how I usually use these 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 programs so I, I'm loading in this picture of young Peter O'Toole one of my favorite old actors um, and uh, there are all these different tutorials I tend to go, I know tutorials but filters and I tend to go and use them uh, the ones that I tend to use sometimes is like there's this really pretty engraving one and if you get filter forge this is filter forge 7 if you get it uh, and you don't see a filter that I'm talking about chances are it's on the site and you just have to download it for free and it will install it in the program this also runs it natively inside uh, Photoshop this is the standalone version that I'm working with right now. Uh, so this is the original photograph, and this is nice because they have a little slider here, so you can see the filter applied, you know, and compare directly. I'm going to go ahead and slide that all the way that way. So this one, and you, you see there are presets to it that you can use. Real pretty engraving pattern. I tend to like the default the best and then you can also adjust the settings in the default so see how there's all these setting tools you have here right now I have this showing actual pixels if your computer is rather slow under view you can have in preview size reduced and it will show you a kind of preview approximation of what it's going to look like and do it much faster I have a fairly fast computer right now that I'm dealing with so I don't have to deal with it but anyway I mean there's you know as you can see I can rock it through some of these things really quickly and you can see how fast they're applied I mean I don't know what that one is but it's cool <laughs> there's, there's a piece of wall art for you right there <laughs> um, and then uh, but the other one that I that I, I tend to use bits of is is sketchy paint especially for generating sort of abstract backgrounds for me you can see it's kind of going through it takes a couple steps for it to go go through this and you can see the, the status bar down here in case you're wondering oh is it done or not done yet you know but you can see this is a very pretty this is like almost like an auto Craig Mullins as a friend of mine Brad, Brandon Peterson likes to refer to it as um, but again I wouldn't just okay done I got it this is it I applied the filter I made my art no you know it's like think about how this could work with some of your conceptual work you throw this over in an opacity you erase through parts of it you use bits of it that sort of thing um, but this is definitely a, a filters you should have in your quiver because there it just does a gazillion things and even weird things like I mean this is a distortion filter I don't know exactly when I would be using this filter but it's pretty interesting and it definitely performs rather quickly um, one of the other ones that I thought was kind of interesting was uh, they have uh let's see where is it organic patterns they have all i mean again it's just a zillion things that you can throw on these guys this is nice too also for you people who are going to make brushes that are maybe seamless brushes you can tell these things to be seamless or not seamless so you can make nice seamless brushes tileable brushes out of a lot of this stuff um this one blows me away i'm doing a fantasy book right now and you bet i'm going to be using this this generates maps now again I'm not going to use it out of out of the can but I can go ahead I can change you know the you can change the island shape randomly with seeds you can have more rivers you can have less rivers you can 
change the color of all the different things. You can add forest cover. There's more forest, mountain variety, mountain shape. You see now there's a bunch of other mountains up there. You bet in the fantasy book I'm doing, I'm going to be using this at least as a basis to do some stuff. Also, I'm working on a pirate thing, so this might uh, work well for that as well. But see all these adjustments that you have? So you really can make it so it's not like when you use this, it's going to be, oh yeah, everybody else is going to look exactly the same. But that's part of the point too, is if you use these as jumping off points, that you want to make it your own in some way, shape, or form by changing the color, by repainting over part of it, by having your own thing come through it, you name it. All right, so that's Filter Forge. Definitely worth having. See you next time. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please uh, check out our website, digitalartstutorials.com. And if you have any friends or family you think might enjoy it, please, by all means, share away. Uh, there will be a lot more of this stuff coming up. I'm dialing up to do a lot more tutorials, so subscribe and stay tuned for more.